Green so welcome Ridge. back everyone. You'll never guess where we're at today. We're mission Control? Uh, you would be Mission Control and this would be Mars. Mars. We're on yeah. Mars welcome here with, Mars. With, my, with my neighbor and good friend, the real Martian. And we have special guests. Mr. Allen is Jack Howdy Colton. ho, howdy ho. Where have you been for the last summer? Hanging out in the woods. Putting fighting, out fires. Fighting wildland Having fires? Yeah. I put fires out so well, look what happens. <laughs> a brand new, newly minted FFT-1 yeah. wildland firefighter. Congratulations. Future maybe yeah. Helitac firefighter, hopefully. Anything, sky's the limit, who yeah. knows. So we have, awesome. some, we have some wildland firefighting stuff. Um, Alan and I did did uh, Cringe Cringe, did a little war bag video on how to pack our wildland fire bags. They're really disappointed in it. This was a, before we had maybe as much experience as we should have before putting it on the internet. I feel like we had too much experience of the maybe wrong kind. Overthinking it. Yeah, yeah, we overthought yeah. a lot. So we're going to be redoing that because we have a lot of lessons learned as well as uh, one of the most frequent questions we get asked is how, how as a young guy, as a young girl, or even as someone that wants to change your career, how do I get involved with that? And you're a great resource for that. So yeah. we'll be doing that in the future. But today I wanted to do an update on Jeff's um, amazing, um, the HAB. Uh, it's been, what, a year since we were here last one time? One year, almost exactly one almost year. Almost a year, yeah. and you won't believe the transformation of what goes inside. It truly is um, miraculous. So can you take us inside? Absolutely, let's All go. Right. Let's, cool. Let's go and see. Can we take the horses? <laughs> they gotta stay outside. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Don't be biting the butt. Welcome. Awesome. Oh, it's much warmer. Much warmer in much here. Wow. It's like a sauna in here. This is fantastic. Jeff, how big is this? This is uh, 80 feet by 40 feet by 22 at the peak. So I'm trying to figure out how cold it was. You guys are giving me the metric system. Is it yeah. to 20 degrees? Zero. zero. That would be zero Celsius. Zero yeah. Celsius. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. Yep. I thought zero was freezing. Zero, zero is zero freezing. Is yeah, we got this wrong. Zero, zero is 32. Is zero is 32. See how confusing Fahrenheit. the metric mm -hmm. system is? You scientists don't even understand it. <laughs> um, I want to show you guys, uh, it, it's amazing what Jeff has done here. When we were here last time, you had just put up the shell. Yep. Now it's insulated, so it's 20 degrees outside. How warm is it in here? Because I'm going to take my, my coat off. 65 Fahrenheit. It's really i got to show you the biggest fans in the heater I think I have in the county. They're pretty, they're pretty Let's big. check those out. This is the big heater. And this is the big fan. I'm a big fan. So what you guys are doing right now to, to help for, to make the HAB basically pay for itself to be, to be self-sufficient uh, financially is growing microgreens. I didn't even know what a microgreen was yeah. until, until you showed me. What is a microgreen? So these, if you're looking at here, these are the pea seeds. And microgreens are just the first true leaves coming on to the microgreens themselves. Or and so you're the selling these to restaurants, local stores and yep, stuff? Yep, you got it. And they are cool. So what's the benefit of microgreens? Why is there a demand for these? 40% uh, uh, more nutrients in just one stem than the entire plant. So you get a lot of nutrients, a lot of flavor. It tastes just like a pea. Like yeah. if you yeah. have it, it'll taste exactly and like you're eating a pea. How long does it take from the time you guys seed uh, to, to harvest with these things? For peas, it's two weeks. For radish and for kale, it's one week. One two week. Weeks. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yep. so when you get the harvest, I'm going to show you. You guys have a really clever assembly line set up here. This is kind of... Uh, there isn't, aren't really any rules here. You guys are kind of inventing this as you go, right? Some of, yeah, and then a lot of YouTube help as well from like Curtis, you know, he's got a lot of the ideas. And this is just a cleaning station. So, so the microgreens, the first thing they go in here and you've got a Karcher pressure washer. Uh, this is actually the last station. The first one is right over there. We better, so, we better start at the beginning. Yeah, then. so then this is where we cut them. So just a, it's called Farmer's Friend. You just put what? the tray underneath there and it cuts it with a reciprocating blade, drops yeah. it in here. Now hold on a second. So you. You put the tray in, underneath. underneath here, and this is just a cordless drill. Yep. Is that just a rubber yep. drive band? Yep. And how does it work now? You just pull the trigger and then you'll slide. You'll see the little blade right here. Oh, I see the blade. Yep. Yeah. So it'll start going back and forth. And then you shove the tray underneath. And then these things, they grab the microgreens and throw them into the, into the basket. How does it work? Oh, it works really well. It's like a chicken butt. So if no, you didn't I, have... Yeah. If you didn't have that, you essentially, it would just be 
hundreds and hundreds of hours with Lots a scissor. Lots of either a knife, really sharp knife, or scissors, which okay. we've done both ways, and they both suck. So you put them in here, and, and then you cut them, and then what? And then we'll actually put them into here, which is a bubbler. We'll fill this full of water. Water comes in, we fill it all up, and then uh, we turn it on. And the air comes in, and it actually agitates everything. So you've got like a, a vacuum pump. It's just a jacuzzi pump. A yeah. jacuzzi pump, and that's agitating. Yep. It's the equivalent of washing it with your hands. Oh, fascinating. And then we converted this into a giant salad spinner. So, so this the, is wash, just... the washing machine is a giant salad spinner. Yep. And that works good because it's stainless steel. And we don't even put the crop directly in it. We actually have a food safe container that we put everything into. Oh, right. So it's safe. And then this station here, you'll take the, this is, goes in the spinner. You'll take it and spread all the microgreens out. And then you'll hit the go button. And then the fans come on and it blows the water off the microgreens and helps keep them dry. So you don't want wet microgreens. <coughs> These are just uh, just Walmart fans. Yeah, M just box fans. Amazon box, box fans. Yep, exactly. And how long does it take to drive over the screen? Oh, just a few minutes, like two, three minutes. And then how do you package? Uh, we have a stainless steel packaging station and then we have clam shells and uh, plastic bags that we put everything into. And then you, and you've got a commercial refrigerator now? We do, yep. So uh, we just take everything once it's packaged and put it in here. And then when we're ready to ship, we have our, uh, our shipment vehicle now and we just take everything to market. That is amazing. Do you ever, you ever thought you'd be a microgreen farmer? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Yeah. We just wanted to help pay for everything. So that's well, it. well, one of the things that I've been watching with your channel is, uh, that's been super challenging, obviously, has been a way to try to figure out a way to insulate this. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I see, I noticed that you were up on the ladder and now you're using a rope system and all that. So yep. why is it only halfway insulated? Uh, because we want the lighting to come in uh, from the south. So we, it's a, called a passive solar greenhouse. So during the day when the light is coming in, we get free light. So instead of having to use LEDs, which is what we use on the surf bed, we get all the natural light, saves on the electrical bill. And then we also want the heat coming in. So that saves on the heating bill. Oh my gosh them they're just swarming right there that's a that's a fish you have an actual fish there living are. lots so of fish here you've they got come. to fish underneath the beds yep there they are right there and what type of fish are these Whoa. those are rainbows Goodness. rainbow trout check that and what's so how would a fish contributing or what part of the system are they fulfilling right now they provide the nutrients for the plants really? they did they tasted really good and we smoked them what did you eat the rainbow fish trout how big are they up there? Uh, that one that you saw is 16 inches. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that's yeah. a good so, size. Yeah. So the last time uh, we, were, we were here, uh, you just had kind of a dirt gravel floor. I have never seen this before. What is this? What is this? This story? is from Nuna Innovations. It's a uh, quarter floor max. And uh, they donated it to the cause. And it's, it is it's, awesome. It's plastic? It is. Yeah, this is heavy duty. I think each one of these panels can hold up to 30,000 tons. They're used for these really big up north. They'll put them up in the Arctic and they'll drive their big ore trucks onto them to so do maintenance. Gets, gets everybody out of the mud. Correct, yeah. Is yeah, this is right? really meant for heavy duty outdoor stuff and it just happens to be perfect for what we want to do. Can you pull a piece up? How thick is it? Uh, it's What's right it here. You can see, but it's, it's hard to pull up right now, but it's almost two inches. Two inches. And it's easy to cut. You know, you just get your skill saw out. So you can, drive, you can drive a tractor or car or truck on this, anything? You can drive a lot onto this. You can yeah. drive a train in some cases onto it. It's, it's heavy duty. Like those big, huge mine trucks are. Man, that is. Drive on this. Yeah. That's, it's a whole lot nicer walking on than on the gravel, isn't it? Yeah. No, this stuff turned out really nice. We're really thankful for what they did. Wow, this is really, <laughs> it's really impressive. From what it was to what it is, I mean, last year was so dark in here, and uh, now it's really cool. What's uh, what do you got? What's the purple stuff? So this is radish. So check that out. This isn't well. It's it's the greens of the radish. Yeah, it's a radish plant. So you should pretty much get. Oh my gosh, it tastes exactly like a radish. Just like radish. That's wild, and it's just coming from the greens just itself. Just one. Yep. So show me this better mousetrap that you found. All right, yeah, so I found this online. Uh, this is, I call it the machine gun mousetrap, but it's an A24 mousetrap, rat, rat mousetrap, I should say, and it's CO2 powered. So they use the, the cylinders from like a pellet gun. Correct, yep, exactly. The same ones from a pellet gun, and then it has a giant actuator in here. The mice come up, they stick their head up to try to get to the bait, which is right here. Can you take that out there? Yep. So 
That's the the bait goes in there. Hold that up and see it. So yep. you just squeeze the bait in there. Yep. Focus there. And then that I'm assuming that wire is the trigger. Correct. Yeah, the mice will come up. And, and so as soon as they put their head up there to try to get the bait, a big hammer uh, comes out. A, a cylinder comes out and knocks them on the head. Yep. And they're dead. I came out here one day. I had five dead mice, and I never had to reset the trap. Oh, it resets itself. Yep. Every single time. I think wow. I think we found a better mouse trap. Yeah. So there's like a pile of mice there was there was five there was five mice and then they climb on top of each other to get up and get the food is oh, that, that is right so that's wild. morbid it, it is pretty cool. what does that cost this 172 or 127 okay so i got this one they sent it so okay i you know tested what? it out I've got something even better than that it has four legs and a tail it's free <laughs> just let it loose let we it roam can't in, let here. Them in here that's the problem the because it's food grid. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So no farm kitties for you. That's right. Yeah. No cats no, I get allowed, no when cats allowed. allowed when you're selling produce. Yeah, yep. you got to keep it clean. You can't yeah. let the dog in. can't let the cats in. So yeah, that really is a better mouse trap. This one works really that's good. Wild. We tried out the bucket trap where they walk across the bucket. Yeah, fall in the water. Uh, it just didn't work very well. Yeah, I pretty... mean, it's a good, it's certainly logical and makes sense. But yeah. this thing, this is actually, this would work in a food safe facility. Well, that's pretty impressive. You guys have put a lot, a lot of work into this. Um, so this is very, very preliminary. It's just something we were kicking some ideas around, but Ellen and I were, were talking uh, with you this morning yep. about maybe the possibility of doing some workshops um, because you have, uh, I mean, you guys have learned so much. And we I have. know you've had a lot of struggles and you know, you pretty much at this point know, know what, wor what works and what doesn't work. We do, yeah. Lots um, of what not to do lessons. What not to do lessons. And um, so uh, we, we're kind of wanting to maybe gauge if there would be interest in that. Yeah. Um, so report back in the comments if that's something that, you know, maybe we could do like a one day deal and, and maybe even have some experts. We even mentioned uh, my friend Curtis Stone uh, yeah. coming down from Canada. Um, he's been down to our place and I know, know he wanted to bring his family back down, but maybe we could put something together and folks could come out and, and spend a day um, on some sort of workshop would be be really interesting. It would be, yeah. 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 So we haven't, we, we don't have any plans to do it yet. We're just kind of gauging interest. But if you do have an interest in this, um, let us know in the comments and it, maybe it's something we could put together. Yeah, I'd be very curious to know what people are thinking and what they would like to see. Yeah. Even, you know, if they told us, hey, I'd love to come if you could talk to us about this. And maybe Alan could come out and show us how to fire safe our... our yeah, I'll our, dig a fire line around the whole our urban place. interface. Just in our case. Inter there urban interface yeah, homes. Yeah, I'll do a little urban interface workshop at the same time. If they wanted to learn more about this, where can they go? What's your... You have a YouTube channel. We right? do. We do have a YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, so uh, The Real Martian is our YouTube uh, channel name, but you can get there by www.therealmartian.com. Cool. Yeah, and I'll put, cool. I'll put at the end of this video, I'll put a clickable link. Uh, just click on mm -hmm. Jeff's video. Uh, as well as the subject heading, all that will be there. So go on over to Jeff. Jeff's tell him I said hi. Yeah, yeah, love that. Tell him I said hi uh, <laughs> and uh, support him and his family because what you guys are doing is is you're trying to build um, a sustainable food source uh, and energy and energy, a one package deal. The idea ultimately is those of you who've been watching the video is to shrink this down yep. into a connex size box that can be dropped off um, anywhere. Yep. Hurricane, anywhere in the world hurricane yeah. relief um yeah, you know cold hot and have it, doesn't yeah. matter humid yeah. dry we want to be able to put them everywhere yeah so just lots of lessons learned here to try to get it smaller and smaller and smaller yeah that's it's really amazing so i invite you to follow along in his channel you guys have done a good job and your video production is getting really good good and, mentor uh, <laughs> somebody's getting pointers the blind yeah. the blind and the blind <laughs> yeah uh, that's it. So check out uh, Jeff's channel and uh, look forward, Alan. Um, hopefully, I'll get you roped in. We're going to go back and redo the the, bags. the wildland video. Yeah, it's oh. going to be a ten-part series, forty-five minutes per episode. It's a lot of popcorn, <laughs> a lot of coffee. Subscription based. Yeah, yeah. it's all yeah. subscription yeah. based. Yeah, hundred dollars per episode. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's all. <laughs> it'll all be free. But, uh, yeah. but and live. We'll do it live. Also, <laughs> we we both were out this summer, and um, what, strange things happen on wildland fires, and I think we both have some pretty interesting. <laughs> stories uh, to share no there's no stories in yeah fire. yeah we don't what have what happens that. on the fire line yeah what happens on is the fire, fire line yeah. until it's on youtube yep until it's on and YouTube. then everybody yeah. sees then it then it's out of yeah. great we'll be changing a lot of names to protect certain people <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well all right well thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next video merry christmas